Alright, now our sauce is boiling. If you come look at it, you're going to see that it has got a nice rolling boil to it. You're also going to see that it has thickened. This right now is known as what's known as a bechamel. Um, it's not actually even a cheese sauce until we start adding the cheese to it. Now I've got a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese here. That we're going to add and we're going to do it real slow because what will happen is if you add it too fast, your sauce will actually seize um, and the cheese will actually seize up and you'll get a real grainy type of cheese sauce and that's not what we're looking for. We want it nice and smooth and creamy. So we're going to whisk this in real slow. I also have two cups of white American sharp cheese. And we're going to whisk that in real slow as well. Alright, and as you can see, even just from that little bit of cheese, um, the quarter cup, it is thickening already. Again, we're going to do the cheese real slow and give it the opportunity to melt because you don't want, again, it to seize up. We're going to cut our heat back just a little bit because it doesn't need to be so high. And I did grate this cheese earlier this morning myself um, from a block. And again, this is two cups of American Sharp. As you can see, it's melting nicely. And really getting saucy and creamy. The whole idea behind whisking constantly is to keep it from burning and to evenly heat it. Um, and you do want to make sure you get the sides from time to time because it will stick to the sides if you're not careful. So once we get this cheese in here, we're going to add our seasonings to it. <clears throat> Um, and for seasoning, we're going to put salt, pepper, fresh ground nutmeg, which is what I ground up this morning. Um, also, I got it ready. It's sitting over there on the counter. And the more you do this kind of thing, the more uh, you're able to do with one arm. Alright, so now that we've got our cheese in there, it's melted nicely. We've got the heat reduced. We've got rid of these dishes here. Alright. You also want to have a tasting spoon. Um, because you want to be able to taste your product as you go so that you know exactly how you want to season it, exactly how it's tasting, what it is you need to do to make corrections, and if there's corrections to be made. Um, professional places will occasionally have uh, throwaway spoons. And that's nice. But we're going to kick it up a little bit with some salt, some pepper, and some nutmeg. Um, now, again, this is the ground nutmeg that I ground up this morning. We're just going to put a pinch in there because nutmeg is a real powerful herb. And it takes a little bit, goes a long way. Um, let's get that mixed in there. And the whole purpose of the nutmeg, really, is just to add additional flavor to the cheese sauce. 
Um, and it also kind of helps cuts out the sharpness a little bit. So, and as you can see, it is good and creamy and thick. And we're going to get some salt and pepper added in here. the heat again because it's starting to boil again. We don't need it to boil. We just need it to kind of simmer a little bit. We'll add our pepper here. Now, because it's a white sauce, if you chose to, you could add white pepper so that you didn't have the black specks in there, which you can see are forming. Um, again, it's from the pepper. But, you know, myself... I'm not really concerned with the black specks in it as much as I am the flavor. Um, white pepper also tends to be a little bit hotter in terms of spice um, than what black pepper does. Um, not that I'm opposed to spice by any means. I'll get a clean spoon here. Let's this again. and see how good and thick it is. So. Okay, we're going to add just a little bit more nutmeg. Not a bunch, but just a little. Pinch more salt. And a little bit more ground pepper. And to me, the fresh grind pepper like this is far better than the uh, canned, store-bought, already ground pepper. It holds more flavor. Um, one other thing you want to consider when you're grinding your own pepper is the tighter you have the grinder screwed together or tightened up, the finer the grind of the pepper. You don't necessarily need it real fine um, unless you're wanting to add more heat to it meaning temperature, spice heat. So now our cheese sauce, I believe, is pretty much done. We'll get another spoon here. That's perfect. So we're going to kick this off. We're going to move it to a burner that's not hot and let it chill. Because we still have a little while before our um, turkey is done. But... We're set. We're ready to go. We've got our cheese sauce. It's finished. All right. We're going to clean that up. Now, when I come back, the turkey will be done. We'll pull it out. We're going to let it rest for 10 minutes, but I want to show you what it looks like real quick before we go. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of heat in there. Let me grab a towel here. You see the nice golden color crust that's forming? Real beautiful. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that back in there for about another hour or until it reaches about 150 degrees because it'll still cook even once it gets up to 150 degrees and you remove it from the oven. It's still going to cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so it's going to get up to that 160, 165 that it needs to be. And if you overcook the turkey, it's like, let's say you cook it to 165 degrees in the oven. What's going to happen is when you pull it out and, you, and you're letting it rest, it's going to end up cooking itself to about 170, 175, even maybe 180. So now your meat has been overcooked. It's going to be dry. And that is not what we're looking for with this specific turkey. So we're going to finish this turkey off. When I pull it out, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, we'll let it rest for 10 minutes and we'll go from there. And... I will see you guys when I come back. All right, guys, welcome back. What I've done is I've taken four eggs, a quarter cup of milk, a pinch of salt, a little bit of pepper, and basically made a scrambled egg base. Um, and a little stringy. Well, this is actually Bobby Flay's twist to the Kentucky brown, or the Kentucky hot brown, rather. Um, kind of doing a uh, French toast, so to speak, twist to the hot brown. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a slice of bread, we're going to dip it into the egg mixture, 
We're going to let it get good and soaked and saturated for about 30 seconds or so is about how long it would take for it to get all the way through. Um, in the meantime, while that's sitting there for a second, in here I've got a nice warm skillet with two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. Again, that's just going to help add color and help it to cook. So what we're going to do is we're come back over here, grab our piece of bread. And that should be about hot enough, I think, because you can see it's bubbling. So we're going to pull our piece of bread out, let it drain off most of the excess. And you can feel the weight of all the liquid into the bread um, when you're doing it as well. So we'll just lay that in there like so. Now our skillet's not quite hot enough, so what we'll do, wash my hands here real quick. And what we'll do is we'll go on ahead and kick the heat of that uh, skillet right on up there so that it browns quickly. this up. When I get done frying and browning both sides, we're going to put it on this cookie sheet. Um, and we're going to leave it sit until the turkey itself is done, which has about another 20 minutes. Um, and then we'll let the turkey rest for 10 to 15 minutes. And we'll take a couple slices off the turkey and I'll show you how to put this whole thing together. Also, while I'm gone, I'm going to slice up some tomato and show you how to put this whole thing together with the tomato and how to prepare it for service or to serve to your family. And this is a meal that is high in calories. By no means is it meant for somebody who's on a, a low calorie diet. Um, <clears throat> and it is a southern home style type of meal that will fill you up very quickly. So let me get to this and then I will see you guys in a little bit. Alright, our turkey is done. I'm going to pull it out of the oven right now. I'll let you guys take a look at it here real quick. I put foil on it to help keep it from splattering because it was splattering all over the place. So we pull this foil off here. As you can see, it has a great color to it. And it is at 100 and um, 55 degrees. We are going to let it rest for a few minutes. Um, 10 minutes to be exact, so let me set my timer here. Let that rest for 10 minutes. I went on ahead and made up my egg mixture for the French toast. The savory French toast is essentially what we made. Um, again, egg, salt, pepper, milk. Here's a piece of our French toast. As you can see, it's got good brown color. We got our cheese sauce here, the bacon there. I've got a few tomatoes sliced right in here. We're going to start putting this thing together here in a moment when the turkey cools. Um, and then once we get it put together, I'll show you how to go on ahead and prepare it to give to your family. Um, basically what you want to do is when you put this thing together, you're going to want to put it together on a oven safe container, oven safe plate, whatever the case is. Me personally, I prefer putting it on a plate that's oven safe um, and heating up the whole plate because it will help keep the food hotter longer. Um, and some people eat extremely slow, whereas others eat relatively fast. So we're going to let that rest. I'm going to get a plate out. I'm going to start putting that together um, as soon as the turkey cools. And I'll show you guys how to do all that when we come back.